Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. We're getting ready to make some square hamburger buns. Now, we don't really use them for hamburger because we don't eat hamburgers that often, but I like to use them for sandwiches, and I like to have them crispy on the outside and real moist and tender on the inside. So this is basically half the recipe for the uh, hamburger buns. I think. I don't know. I just kind of threw it together a couple of weeks ago and I didn't have time to cut out hamburger buns so I just cut them with the pizza cutter and cut them in squares and they turned out great. So Mr. Bucky goes, we need to have this more often. So we've, I've already made it twice now so we're going to do it the third time. So I did write down my recipe, uh, just what I kind of threw together. So it turned out really good. So. Anyway, we're going to use the uh, KitchenAid and let the KitchenAid knead it also. Now, if you don't have a KitchenAid or a mixer that can knead for you, you can just knead it by hand for maybe about 10 minutes. All right, so we're going to get started. All right, the first thing I did was to scald one half cup of whole milk. You see there's kind of a film on it, and then let it... Uh, the temperature get back down to about 110 degrees. Also, I heated up one and a half cups of filtered water and you want to do that because regular water of course has chlorine in it and chlorine uh, kind of really kills yeast is what it does so I'm going to dump it all in together so I'm dumping in one cup of water well, excuse me one and a half cups of water about two tablespoons of oil I'm just going to pour that in and guess at it and I'm going to go ahead and put in the half cup of scalded milk. And you could use uh, powdered milk for that, and then you wouldn't have to scald anything. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my yeast. Now, I get my yeast from King Arthur Flour in bulk, and I usually order one of these a year. Sometimes it doesn't last quite a year. I'm going to put in two heaping teaspoons of yeast, just because that's what I did before, and it worked out really well. So I'm just going to mix that up just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put in two tablespoons of sugar. Just to give the yeast something to eat or to flourish on. So all I'm doing is just mixing that up together. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Got it all mixed up, and now I'm going to put in the flour, and that's going to be three cups, and I'm using King Arthur bread flour. And again, you don't really sift the flour before you measure it for yeast bread. You just dump it in, really. And sometimes you might need a little less flour and sometimes a little more. So I'm going to leave my flour out and I'm going to dump one and a half teaspoons of salt right in on the top of it. And now we're going to just let that come together using the KitchenAid. And there go my dogs. They know, know I'm videotaping. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get this mixed up and when it comes all together and forms kind of a ball around the uh, dough hook, then we'll be ready to take it out. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've got the uh, KitchenAid going pretty good now. I've actually got it on level four, but it won't work on level four for long. So I'm going to add about another half cup of flour, and I'm just going to stop it and dump that in, because obviously it doesn't take as long to knead the dough uh, when you're using the KitchenAid. So we're going to turn it back on and just leave it on two and just let it go. All right, we'll be back. All right, we're going to now add another half cup. Just dump it right in. So that's a total of four cups of flour. All right, we're ready to go again. All right, that'll probably be the last flour I add in. What I'm looking for is for the dough to come all together in a big blob. All right, we'll be back. Okay, the dough has somewhat come together now. 
Last time I made this, it did come together a little bit better, but we're going to go ahead and take it out now. We have actually kneaded it in the uh, KitchenAid for about maybe five or six minutes. That's it. So I need to get it off my dough hook here. And I don't let it uh, rise in my KitchenAid little bowl here. And the reason is when I put it in the oven, that's where I put it to rise. I've started doing that now. This metal bowl attracts the heat and it actually gets too warm. So I have to transfer it to a uh, glass bowl. So I've got uh, the, uh, we've got someone walking by on the sidewalk. My dogs think they own the sidewalk. We'll be right back. Okay, I dumped the dough out into my glass bowl, and I did put about a tablespoon of oil in the bottom of it. So I'm just going to uh, turn this dough and get oil all around on the bowl so it doesn't stick later. And this is kind of a really a wet dough but it sure does make a great little bun really does all right so we're going to put some saran wrap on this and put it in the oven with the light on now we're not turning the oven on we just got the light on so it'll get to the right temperature and we'll be back probably in about an hour when this doubles in bulk okay here's the uh, bread i just took it out of the oven i also put a uh, a, a pan of warm water in there. It's definitely warm. Yeast love that warm. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and grease this pan really good. Push my sleeves up. I'm just using some Crisco. Now we like this bread um, crispy on the bottom and really crispy on the top. So what we're going to do now is let it rise again. I'm just put plenty of the Crisco on it or shortening. It's going to make the bottom crispy. All right, and I don't grease the pan until I'm ready to dump it out in the pan. And that's so I can have my fingers greased a little bit and it won't stick to my hands. All right, so we're ready to dump this out. And it is kind of a wet dough. And even though I greased this bowl, it's still kind of sticking to it. So I can get that all out of there. And it came out pretty good, I guess. Okay, so now. Uh oh, I see Mr. Bucky has just come home, so we're going to try to do this real quick because the dogs will start barking. All right, so what I'm going to do is just stretch this out on the pan, sort of as even as I can get it. Right up into the corners. Now, the second uh, rising of the dough won't take as long. So, so this sort of looks like a really thick um, pizza crust. But, all right, so I've got it greased. Let me get a paper towel and get this grease off my hands. I'm trying to do this real quick before Bucky, Mr. Bucky comes to the door, because when he does, there'll be lots of barking. Okay, so now, all I'm going to do is take my little pizza cutter and I'm going to first, oops, there's a hair. Ugh. It's one of my hair. Ugh. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut it right down the middle with this pizza cutter. I don't think I have my light on. Hold on. Okay, so now that's a little better. I'm going to cut it right down the middle and see it pulls apart right away. And then I'm going to cut it down the middle of each one of those little sides. I'm really trying to hurry, y'all. Like that. 
And then I'm going to cut it down the middle the other way. Get it to kind of pull apart a little bit. Now it's going to rise again and they're going to go back together, these pieces, but you'll be able to pull them apart very easily. So now we'll take the scissors and just cut that corner. Make sure they're separated. Cut each little corner. For each little piece, make sure they're just cut apart. And again, this is a, a kind of a watery dough. Maybe that's a better way to say it. But it makes a crispy outside and a real moist and soft inside, which we love. Right, let me make sure I can separate them. And see what happens is when it's rising again, a little oil will get down in between those. And so then, even though it's going to uh, go back together, it will come apart easily. All right, there we go. I'm just going to get those out even. And again, don't look so much the way it looks, but the way it tastes. I love all kinds of sandwiches. The other day I made us a ham and tomato and lettuce sandwich with these. They were so good. Sort of like something you would find at Panera Bread, maybe. All right, we're going to put them back in the oven. I'm not going to even cover them up or anything. The oven lights only will probably take about 30 minutes, maybe less, for these to rise up again. Then we're going to cook them. All right, we'll be back. We made it before Mr. Bucky came in the door. All right, we'll be back in a minute. All right, there's what the dough looks like. It's uh, uh, been uh, rising for maybe 25 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the oven on now. I'm going to leave them right where they are, and they'll rise a little bit more while the oven's warming up. So I'm going to cook these at 375 degrees for probably 20 minutes or so, maybe a little longer. Anyway, when they get done, we'll be back. Okay, while our bread is cooking right now, I'm going to go ahead and make us a little soup. Now, the other night we had supper, uh, which consisted of lentils, uh, sort of lentils cooked with onions and bell peppers and uh, fresh cabbage it was steamed and some jasmine rice and we also had a little tomato and uh, avocado little salad with that it was really good so this is what we had left over I just, well, let me turn this down I just dumped it all in the same pot and put it in the refrigerator so now we're going to turn this into some soup and we're going to do that by using two cubes of bouillon, beef bouillon, to kind of perk it up a little bit. So I just use, and that's two cups of water. We're just going to put those little bouillon cubes in and get them dissolved, if I can get it out of the wrapper. There we go. So we're just going to stir that around until that's dissolved. And then I'm just going to dump the bouillon into the uh, lentils and rice and cabbage. Yeah, it was really good, especially having the avocado and tomato little salad with it. So uh, I, might make, I might make that again. I don't know. Okay, there are our rolls. And I've got to put some butter on those on the top. So hold on. We'll be back. Okay, here are the rolls. I've already got some butter melted. And my bouillon is, of course, already boiling. So I'm just going to uh, paint some of the butter right on top of these um, buns, really, is what they are. And they're crispy on the bottom and crispy on the top. And remember, the uh, dough was a real uh, watery, I would call it, dough. So that makes them crispy, but real moist on the inside. Now, we have to let these cool completely before I can uh, cut them, you know, in two, because we're going to have a ham and Swiss cheese sandwich inside these. 
Oops, I don't want that to drip on my burner. And now I'm going to take these out of the pan and put them on a little rack. And I do that to make absolutely sure they stay crispy on the outside. All right. Let's see if I can flip these off onto that little rack right there. Wish me luck. I think I can do it. I'm going to get them all in really one swipe. Make sure nothing's stuck anywhere. I think we're good to go. All right, here goes. Gonna let those cool completely because if you try to cut them when they're still warm, they kind of gum up on the inside. But if you wait till they're completely cool, they'll be real light and airy on the inside. All right, now let's get back to our soup. So my bouillon has boiled now. So what I'm gonna do is just add this to the leftovers. Stir that around a little bit. Let it get back to maybe a little slight boil. And we're going to let our uh, little buns, we'll call them, cool over here. And uh, we're going to be ready to eat our meal real soon. All right, we'll be back. All right, well, our bread is completely cool now. And I did cut it and slice it. And I made a sandwich using the Hormel all-natural ham. No preservatives in that. And we also use some Sargento Swiss uh, thin sliced deli cheese, Swiss cheese. But I wanted to show you, see, I'll come over here a minute. There's what I've got left. Now I will be freezing these, but I want to cut one and let you see what it looks like. So they pull right apart. And on the the ones that I've made for our lunch, I just cut them a different, you know, long ways like that. But these, based on this little edge here, so watch this now. I'm going to cut them using a serrated knife. And again, these are completely cooled. And I wanted to show you the texture of them. And I don't cut it all the way through in the back. There you go and they smell very yeasty and wonderful. They're very soft on the inside and a little crispy on the outside. Now, they freeze very, very well, too. Let me back y'all up a minute. Yeah, so we have had these, um, of course, with hamburgers, and, and I made the hamburger square, y'all, and uh, we've had them with egg salad, and we've had them with tuna salad, and, of course, the ham and cheese. It, I'm just looking for some ways to uh, that I can cook once we're in the travel trailer because we're going to have to stay there a while while we're building the, the house. So uh, I'm looking for ways to have good meals and not so much trouble. But anyway, the uh, I don't know what to call them, y'all. It, it reminds me of something from Panera Bread. And I don't mean to be bragging too much, but they are absolutely delicious. They make anything you put in them taste just delicious. I could even see a meatball sandwich like you get at Subway. That would be good. But the bread is just delicious this way. It's a little hard to work with once you let it rise because it's a wet dough, really. And then putting it down in the pan, you have to kind of make sure your hands are greasy or oily so you can spread it out. But then remember, I just cut it with the pizza cutter, and then it'll kind of separate, but then it goes back together, but then you can pull it apart quite easily. So anyway, here's our lunch. Let me wipe my hands off a minute, because I do put butter on the top of these. All right, let me take y'all off of here and show you. Okay, so there's our meal. And this is uh, really a type of lentil and rice soup. It's got cabbage in it, uh, bell peppers, and onions. And I made this the other night, but each thing was separate on the plate. 
and then I just this this was left over, so I just um, added the uh, beef bouillon and turned it into a soup. And there's some tomato and avocado, a little salad. I did put lime juice on that and a little bit of garlic. And there it is. Of course, we've got our iced tea. All right, y'all, so we will see y'all next time. And I hope you'll try that bread. You will not be disappointed. And this this is a regular uh, uh, jelly roll pan that I use. And I'm just thinking it's 12 by 15. I'm not sure. It's just that normal size. Y'all know the size. Anyway, all right, so we will see y'all next time. Just please try this bread. You will love it. All right, bye for now.